Yeah, you're welcome. So that leads pretty nicely into our topic for today. So we're gonna talk about priority. And this is something that is in the One Thing book. So if you um, have not gotten that book yet, I highly recommend it. It is the kind of book that, yeah, you can listen to the audiobook, and I am more of an audiobook fan than anything, but it's such a great reference material that I would highly recommend getting an a actual copy so that you can take notes and reference back to it. It's a good reference guide. And it's really all about being extremely productive. And part of that, of course, is prioritizing. And um, how many of you are feeling like maybe you're not always clear on what your top priority is when it comes to work or your business right now? Are you kind of feeling like, I don't know, there's 45 things I should be doing right now. And then I get distracted comparing myself to people who are on that top 10 list every month. And then I feel bad about what I'm doing or not doing. And then I think maybe I should change what I'm doing. Um, I'm not seeing immediate results. So I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. So there is, I will tell you, this is not going to change. You are always going to need to refocus onto your priorities when you're in this business. You're running your own company, right? You are the CEO. You have a lot of things that you're responsible for, even if you're on a team. And understanding what you should be doing to be purposeful in the moment does require a constant reminder. It does require being very aware of what's driving you and what you should be accomplishing and what those tasks are built out from that. And I sound like a broken record. I talk about this stuff a lot, but I'm telling you, this is the key. This is the key to accomplishing great things. Um, it sounds so simple, but if you're not doing it yet, you know it's not easy. It's something that does take some time to think about, to put in place and to hold yourself accountable like we talked about last week and to constantly be aware of where you are in the moment and what should I be doing. So um, last week I had you write some things out on a notebook. I hope you are using that and have it posted somewhere. Um, today I'm gonna have you do a quick little drawing. You do not have to be an artist. I am literally asking you to draw two lines of a triangle. Um, so take out your paper kids, paper and a pen, iPad, whatever you wanna do. And just draw the top of a triangle. So an upside down V essentially. And less than a third of the way from the tip of that V of that triangle, um, you can think of it as a, um, an iceberg, basically. This is a point coming out of the water. So just under the tip of that iceberg, draw a little wavy line for water. So less than a third of the way down. Okay, with what is left, about halfway across that part, do a dashed line. So you're essentially gonna end up with three sections. The bottom's gonna be a little bit bigger. The middle is gonna be a little bit smaller than the bottom. The top is going to be quite a bit smaller than both of those. So you've got your iceberg sticking out of the water and then you have these two other pieces. So I've talked about this a little bit before, but today is a great example of that. If you were in our team meeting, um, we were looking at awards for January and that is that tip of the iceberg, right? That is the productivity of those agents and those teams. So uh, in that tip or next to it, just write productivity. So the productivity of the people in our market center who are you know, building big businesses, who are extremely effective at what they do, that's who we see on those charts every month. All we see is their productivity. And it's like, man, it just, do you, do you find yourself thinking like, oh, well, you know, they've got you know, an assistant, oh, they have a team behind them, or well, you know, they've been in the business for a while, or they you know, grew up in the North Shore, so they have all these contacts with Whitefish Bay houses or they, whatever it is, right? Like we, we find ourselves trying to make reasons for why they've been so productive. Or we just say like, wow, they're just amazing and I'm not amazing. And so that's, you know, it's good for them. But 
I don't, I have no idea how to get there. And all I see is their production, right? This also goes for life. How many people are on social media and you really only see the highlight reel, right? Let's be honest. It's very rare that people are giving you the behind the scenes of what's happening underneath the surface of the water. So we get that little tip of the iceberg of their productivity, but what's underneath, is it bigger or smaller? It's bigger, right? Tremendously bigger. What is at the tip of the iceberg is about one ninth of what's happening underneath. One ninth. That means almost all of it is what's happening underneath the surface. And what drives that productivity, what drives those results, what drives the profit of those businesses is priority and purpose. So that middle section right next to it, priority. So you've got your productivity at the top. That's really all you see. That's what everybody sees. That's what everyone thinks makes you amazing. That's where, oh, it's just, wow. They just, they just came on the scene out of nowhere and they're just killing it. Not true. They've been working a lot underneath the surface, right? So priorities in the middle and the bottom one is purpose. So everything builds up from that, right? If you have a true purpose, it will guide you and help you figure out your priority. And then that will inform your actions and that results in productivity. Seems pretty straightforward, right? And we've talked a little bit about purpose before and we'll go into that again, um, but purpose does really inform what is your priority. Um, we could get very philosophical about that. We could talk about um, you know, your big why and we will in another class. But I think today, keeping it from the perspective of your business and getting yourself up and running, that's what we're gonna look at as our purpose. So, um, would anyone be willing to share what they see as their priority in their business right now, maybe just this week or this quarter or this year, and, and give us a little insight as to where that came from? So what's your top priority? What's your top priority today? It doesn't have to be a big, impressive thing. It can be like, I'm going to sign up for family reunion. <laughs> Here's I would why. I would say to start developing relationships. Yeah. Great. So, Tom, what do you think is the the purpose of doing that? What's the reason behind your focus on relationships? Well, both from the buyer and seller standpoint, obviously, I'm trying to get listings. And I've joined William's team, which I'm really super excited about. So, we're just trying to develop relationships that will lead to listings, because that's more of a obviously a profit center versus being on the buyer side. Um, but, you know, this is obviously a marketing intense business. I've got my 150 handwritten notes out and that's, that'll take a little time to bear fruition. I'm not, not expecting super leads, you know, right off the bat there, but however, in, a, in my tennis club, just, just, you know, meeting as many people as I can to add to my you know, database um, you know, it can, you know, you can make it happen overnight necessarily, but you have to be at it when you're new. Uh, that I think that's for me critical to have as many contacts as possible. And then of course, one thing leads to another. So yeah, generically. excellent. So, so when you find yourself, Tom, in a, a point, a point in the day where you're like, what do I do next? Anybody else get to that point where you're like, you're in your office, or you just finished an appointment and you've got some time and you're like, what, what should I be doing right now? Sure. What is yeah. informing how you use your time is your priority, right? So for Tom, his, his purpose behind having building these relationships is that he knows this is going to lead to connections to build his business. And building his business means that he will increase his income. Building his business means that his increase in income will help support whatever his big dream is for the year, right? So he's got a purpose and his priority is this building of relationships. Now, like he said, that may take some time. It's going to take um, real intention and purpose behind what he's doing. So I know from talking to Tom that he's sending out handwritten notes. I know he's calling people. I know he's trying to build a social media presence. He also um, said he joined William Lauer to be on his team. So he's 
connected with another agent. He's building that relationship, which is also going to lead to business for him and be beneficial to William. So that building of relationships, whenever you're in that moment of what should I be doing, what could I be doing right now to build relationships is a great priority to have. So anything that he's doing on a weekly or daily basis, the big thing he should be accomplishing that day is making connections with other people. And he knows that that's going to eventually lead to business. So I think that's uh, you know, a good point too, is this, all this big stuff happening under the surface doesn't necessarily bubble up right away, right? Like glaciers are slow moving and um, that can be true in business too. So the things that you're plugging away doing, it's real easy to get distracted. Um, and like I was saying with family reunion, you know, you're kind of plugging along, doing your thing. You think you're doing what you're supposed to. You think you're doing what, um, you know, is, is best for you based on your purpose and what you think your priority should be, but you don't see immediate results. And it's easy to maybe change your mind a couple of weeks in, you know, oh man, I'm writing all these notes. I'm not seeing these connections happening fast enough. Maybe I should, you know, try to do something else. Maybe I should get new business cards and hand those out, or maybe I should start a different website or do some stuff on social media that distracts me from this relationship building. I thought and I'd that, have a hundred. I thought I'd have 150 listings already. <laughs> yeah. What the heck? What the heck, Tom? So, <laughs> so I think that is uh, something that a lot of us have as a priority. Um, I think understanding the purpose behind it is good, but I think at with this looking at from this scope, understanding what is the most important thing you should be doing right now is informed by your priority. So knowing what that is, is huge. Being able to name that is huge. Putting it on paper, somewhere where you see it every day, the night before you're like, okay, tomorrow, it's all about connecting with people. What am I doing to connect with people tomorrow? Here's what I'm doing. Now, can you have more than one priority? Yeah, right? If you only had one singular priority, you would very likely not find a full life a uh, counterbalance or a um, the support or the structure that you need for your business to grow, right? You're brand new. You don't have a lot of systems in place. You don't necessarily have those roots yet. So there are other things you need to work on, but understanding what is your biggest one thing priority is really important. For me, I have to have three important things a day and I have three important things a week. Those three things a day at least one of those has to have something to do with my three priorities for the week. And those three priorities for the week have to have something to do with my goal for the month. And my goals for the month have to have something to do with my goals for the quarter. And my goals for the quarter have to have something to do with what? I know Grady knows. <laughs> my goals for the year yes so i'm working backwards i'm working backwards from my big goal for the year my big goal for my business everything i'm doing is informed by priority based on those goals does that make sense so if you feel like you are at a loss for what you should be prioritizing you probably don't have clear goals in place you probably don't you've maybe thought about it but you haven't written them down or you kind of think you have an idea, but you haven't taken the time to go into command and break down your desired income to how many closings you have to have, to how much volume you have to sell, to how many people you have to connect with in appointments, how many contracts you have to write, all those things. It's in command for you. You can break it down from your goal. But if you haven't taken the time to get really clear on that goal, it makes it difficult to understand your priority, right? The more mushy and kind of undefined and not super clear your goals are, the harder it's going to be for you to be very specific and very focused on your priorities. Does that make sense? Has anybody been in a situation where you felt like, well, I kind of have a goal right now, but it really 
you could tell it wasn't clear enough to really help you prioritize what you should be doing this week or today. Has anybody been in that position? Anybody want to share about being in that position? If not, I'll jump in, but I'm sure you've been there. <laughs> you might be there right now. So I'll share for, from my, my experience in real estate, I'll talk about this because it's relatable to everybody. When I first started, I had no idea what an average agent would sell in a year. I had no idea how many agents don't make it past their first year. I had no idea um, the kind of the, the great variety of things that I would be responsible for. There were a lot of things that weren't spelled out for me at the beginning that I kind of had to figure out as I went along, or I heard and they were so beyond where I was at that point that I didn't, I couldn't connect the dots. So when I started, I didn't have a goal at all. My first year, I was like, ah, I'm just, I'm going, I'm just doing this. I got to get buyers. That's all I know. I'm going to go. And by the end of the year, it, I had 12 closings, which was great, but I really was all over the place on where I should be prioritizing my time. And so the, the answer to that in, in my approach was just to work as much as possible. So I was used to working a million hours a week because I was a manager in a fine dining restaurant. I was used to working 14 hour days. That didn't seem unusual to me. So I just kept doing that. So I would just be in the office and I'd be running around doing whatever I could. And I just thought if I put as much time as possible into what I was doing, that business would happen. Now, granted, working hard can lead to results, but it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. I burned out in my first year. I burned out in my second year. I burned out in my third year. I like had to figure out how to better prioritize my time, my energy, and that informed what I could say yes or no to, which is what allowed me to finally take a day off a week, which has taken me a long, longer time than I would like to figure out. So priority is not just about what should I be doing in this moment, but priority is about what am I saying yes to right now? That means I'm saying no to something else. What am I saying no to right now? That means I'm saying yes to something else, right? Like, if I know my priority for the week and I know what my goal is, then I'm going to focus on getting that done so that I can say yes to my day off on Sunday. And I can say no to doing work on Sunday because I've got my priorities in place and I understand my goals and I'm tracking them and I'm holding myself accountable. So I know where I am to goal so I can give myself a breather and feel okay about where I am in comparison to my own priorities and goals, not what everybody else is doing, not what the top 10 is in the office, not what I'm learning in family reunion, not what I see on the charts that Charlie's sharing, but my priorities and goals based on my purpose, based on how I want my life to be. That's really what it comes down to. So it's very easy to feel like you've got this kind of ambiguous blob of a goal. And what will happen is you'll either end up working your tail off to get to something that you don't even know what it is. So you never get to feel that thrill of victory, that sense of pride that you've made progress because you have not a clear idea of what you're progressing to, right? You've got to have a clear goal. And that doesn't just mean I want to sell this many homes this year, though that's a great start. It's understanding, well, if I sell this many homes this year, this is what my commission looks like. This is my net. That net is helping me to dot, 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 something super important to me, something super important to my family, something that gets me in the gut that really puts a fire underneath me. And working backwards, it's something that informs not just what should I be doing right now, but what am I tracking? What is my, what am I working towards? So not just I want to make contacts, I want to build relationships, but I need to make appointments with three people this week. I need to, um, like Grady had last week, I need to add contact, I need 75 more contacts in command from this drawing I'm doing for the Super Bowl 
And in order to do that, I know I need to contact this many people. It's the more specific and clear you can be on what those goals are, the better informed you can be about what you should be prioritizing. So not just I should be contacting people right now, but it's I should be contacting 10 people today. Here's how I'm going to do it. Here's when I'm going to do it. And it sounds uh, to, kind of boring. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, to piggyback off of that. So I definitely did not hit the 75, but I will say that you? um uh like about what was it, 40? So a little short. But, okay. A little um, more than half. So so with that though, um, I will say that I definitely got more leads than I was expecting because I had a poll at the bottom, like, are you interested in buying, selling, or uh or investing in real estate, it was like, yes, no, maybe. And then it's like, it's me, like I'm invest or like I'm looking to do that. I actually had a like surprising, like, you know, turnout or I'm the answer for that. So like, that's been like more of my priority this week, like following up and setting meetings from that. So perfect. didn't hit the goal, but definitely a better conversion than I thought it was going to be for sure. That's awesome. And interest. So that's fabulous. And we didn't know about that last week, but what an excellent thing to do, Grady, in terms of your priority, right? Like the point in getting these contacts is to lead to business, right? Is to make those connections and to lead to appointments. So including that in your survey was super smart. Having that question for people that maybe it's not immediate, but to know, you know, get right to the heart of it. Like, hey, by the way, as long as you're signing up for this, let me know if you're thinking about buying or selling. Um, and that's really the purpose. So even though you didn't hit your goal, Grady, you can call that a success because what you're really trying to do is set up uh, a reason to connect with people over real estate and to schedule those appointments. So that's awesome. Nice job. That's great. I'm so glad you did that. That's really smart. So again, those little things. Okay, I'm going to reach out to people. I'm going to have this survey. I'm going to ask them to sign up for this um, drawing. And what is the real point of me doing this? What should I have on this survey to make sure that I'm getting the info I need? Of course, ask if they are thinking about buying or selling or know somebody who is. Awesome. Then being intentional with your time this week, Grady, following up with people, exactly what you should be doing. So if you've got, you're like, well, I did, whew, I did my drawing. I got, I got 40 out of 75 names. I guess it was an okay thing. That's it. Now I'm going to do another thing, but to be like, okay, what, what was the purpose of this? What am I going to prioritize based on my purpose? I'm trying to connect with people to get business. Now I'm going to follow up this week. So it sounds really basic, you guys, but I think, I think it's easy to get lost in all of the other shiny objects and what other people are prioritizing and working on. At the end of the day, this really comes down to what your personal goals are. Because all we really see is people's productivity. We don't see everything that goes on behind the scenes or underneath the surface. And that's where the real work is. And that's the stuff that you really need to take the time to do. And that's why I'm always talking about taking thinking time, uninterrupted focus time, to be really intentional about how you're using your week, your day, your month, your quarter, which is going to lead to whatever the results are for your year. So having a real clear idea of what your goals are is going to help inform your priorities. Now, outside of work, you should also have goals and priorities, right? I see Bridget with her little one. That's a priority, right? If, if you don't, if you, they aren't in the moment, they're going to make themselves a priority in that moment. Yes, absolutely. So Having those priorities outside of work are super important too, because those can also motivate and, and drive your purpose and give you that real focus you need when you're having a hard time or when you have a slow day. I don't know if anybody else, when you have a slow day, do you feel like you get less done because you've got nothing else to do? And like when you actually have appointments, you're like way more productive. Yeah. What's up with that? So I am... I find myself in that position and part of me is like, well, you know, you work hard, you take, you can take a, a what, like a half-hearted day. What is that? Like just either work or don't. Right. So I have to think about, okay, if I don't have much going on today, I'm going to give myself a time goal to be done by three because I haven't prioritized my health. And it's really important that I take some time to do yoga, go for a walk, 
you know, get my vitamins, whatever it is. I haven't really prioritized that outside of business. So in order to help focus me in this less structured day, I'm going to give myself a deadline because saying no to work after three o'clock means that I'm saying yes to another priority that I have. Family, myself, whatever it is, stuff that needs to get done. So giving yourself that deadline sometimes can be very helpful in prioritizing your time. Um, setting time blocks, I've said this before, but setting a time block for the most important things you do in the day. Figure out when you're most productive. A lot of people find that to be early morning because no one's bugging them yet. Um, some people find it to be after the kids go to bed. You know, find what works for you, but it's that, you know, are you reaching out on social media? Are you sending out something, an email? Or are you just giving yourself thinking time? Just time to make that priority list, time to schedule out your week, time to really break down your goals and make sure they're very clear or check back in on them if you don't think something's working. Time to hold yourself accountable. Time to set up next week or shuffle around your ideal week. Um, and for some people, setting a block of time is really restrictive. If you're more of a free spirit, and you just want to know, like, this is going to get done today, but I don't want to have to say it's going to get done during this one hour, then do that. Today, I'm going to take this much time to do this thing. I, I don't know exactly where it's going to fall within the day, but if I haven't done it by one, it's happening at one. You know, give yourself a little flexibility if that helps. But really being intentional about your time is going to get you very far. That's one of the things that I have been able to stick to. If nothing else, if everything else blows up in my day, if, if I, you know, I'm tired and I've just kind of let the world drag me along for a day or two and I'm feeling really confused or lost or um, unmotivated, then if I can just get back to that one thing, like, I can win today still if I can just accomplish this one thing. <laughs> this is my priority. Forget everything else. This is the one thing I've got to I've got to get done today just to feel like I've made some strides. Then give yourself that moment to ask yourself that question. And it's it's asked a hundred times in the one thing book, and it's on the podcast if you've listened to it, and I've talked about it before, but it's what's the one thing I can do? that can make everything else easier or unnecessary? What's the one thing I can do that makes everything else easier or unnecessary? And that, that sounds like almost magical, right? Like, yeah, ha, ha everything else, right. But it's really about breaking it down into like the teeniest little bitty thing. So if you're like, oh gosh, I don't, I, everything else easier or necessary? Seriously? Okay, so I've got to contact all these people. I don't have 100 contacts in command yet. I'm still working on that. Okay, so I need to connect with people. I guess that's what I need to do today. But yeah, break that down further. What does that mean? Okay, well, I, I don't like making phone calls. So it means I need to um, text people. Okay, well, who's people? Who are you going to text? okay, well, I really feel weird about this. So I guess I'm going to start with the people that I'm most comfortable with. Okay. Who are those people? How many of those people are in your phone? Okay. Well, there's, you know, there's like 25 of them. That's kind of a lot for one day. And I don't have that much time today. And I also want to have like real meaningful back and forth with these folks. And one of them is real chatty. So I might need a little more time. So I guess I'm going to pick 10 of them today. Okay. What are you going to send them? Well, uh, you know, maybe I'll do like a quick little video about how I'm really excited about this, but I'm, I'm looking to connect with new people who are looking for a realtor and I'd love their help. Okay, cool. So record your 30 second video. Okay, uh, what are you gonna say in your video? Okay, take the time to write your script for what you're gonna say in your video or practice or just record it a few times until it looks good. Okay. Um, but I've got to do it somewhere where I don't have like kids in the background and all this other stuff. It needs to look um, professional. Well, it's, it's just a friend. So I guess if my car is my quietest place or my office is my quietest place, that's when I need to find a window of time for about 10 minutes when I can record this video and make it generic and have it in my queue 
and then I just need to text it out to people. Please do that individually. Do not send it to a group. You know how annoying group texts are. One person's like, oh, that's great. And then you're in their conversation. No, nobody wants those dings. Nobody wants them. So send them individually and take the time to do that. So your one thing is like finding a quiet moment in your day when you can work on this. And then your one thing is writing your script and knowing what you're going to say. And then your one thing is recording it. And then your one thing is knowing your list of people that you're going to send it to. And then your one thing is sending it out. See how small and easy these steps are. That's what it should be. Path of least resistance, right? When you're doing something big, it can be really easy to come up with excuses. It can be really easy to be intimidated. It can be really easy to get distracted. Probably because what you think your one thing is for today is to put 75 contacts in command. And that's just way too much. It's too big. Break it down into smaller bites. Make it one itty bitty domino that when you knock it over, it knocks over a bigger domino, knocks over a bigger domino. You get momentum and then you're on a roll, right? Grady probably had a hard time starting out that process, right? Of getting your, your plan in place to do those giveaways, to reach out to people. It seemed like a huge project that, you know, the number of contacts you're aiming for was a lot, but breaking that down into those smaller manageable steps or bites was how you got to where you got to. Would you say that's true? Absolutely, definitely. Yeah, so having that to inform how you should be prioritizing your time, that's huge. Now, Grady, when you were working on that, did you also have other things you were working on for your business or your life? Oh, definitely, uh, without a doubt. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So he had other priorities. I can hear them in the background. <laughs> um, and that doesn't mean that that's the only thing he did in the day, but that was a big project that was aimed at an important goal in his business. And he broke it down into smaller bites to get there. And because he broke it down, because he tracked himself, because he knew what his goal was and his real purpose, when he got to the end of the project, he still found victory in where he is, right? So that momentum you can build from doing that is super important. And it's, it's really all about building momentum. So I'm curious if you guys have questions for me in terms of what should you be prioritizing right now? Or if you are working on something you think is your priority and you're just not sure if that is, um, or what I think of as my priorities on a daily basis, they're not that different from a new agent. But I'm, I want to kind of hear from you as to what you're thinking about when, when you're thinking about priority and how you're using your time and if, you're, if you feel like you're making progress. One thing that I feel like I just need to work on is role playing. So that's something I'm going to try to make a priority. I just have realized that, you know, I'm watching the trainings and I'm, you know, in my head things are making sense. Try explaining it to someone else. And I'm like, let's read on again. Like, I feel like the dumbest realtor ever. I had like a buyer consult. Thank God it was like one of my friends, but it just made me realize I was like, you need, like, it'll take time, of course, but you need, like, the more I say this stuff out loud and the more I explain the right to cure out loud, the more confident I'll come across. I feel like if I was them, I would have been like, what? I don't need, I still don't understand what the right to cure is <laughs> after Bridget like botched the whole thing. So it's something that I've had on my list of things to do for like three months. Like, yeah, you should really like role play. You should really role play. And I just never, ever do it. And then I have you, a buyer consult and I'm like, shoot, I really should have done that. I you know, that's that. my life right now. Well, and do you feel, Bridget, like saying I need to role play, is that a small enough domino that it's like a task you can easily set on your calendar and just do? Or can you break that down further? Maybe I need to break it down and hold, like make Betsy do it with me so I'm accountable or something. You know, once I send an invite yeah. to someone like, hey, can you role play with me for an hour? Like then I'll probably do it someone else yes. is stuck with me. So that's probably how I need to break it down. Cool. So you're, you know, you need to practice role-playing, which I think is so important, 
right? Being able to explain something to somebody else, being able to teach something means you really need to know what you're talking about. So that role playing is huge. Thinking about who you're going to do that with, that's a big piece. So you already know it's going to be Betsy. So you might have to reach out to her and be like, hey, Betsy, can we do this and when? So you've got to get it scheduled. Um, what else do you need to do to make sure that this is a successful use of both of your time? What are you going to role play about? Right? Have some topics in mind. Here's some things. Here's three things that I know I need to work on. What are three things you need to work on? Okay, let's let's make sure that we can use our time accordingly. So let's start with our most important for each of us and see how that goes. Um, okay, what what do you need to say? How do you find that out? You've got to maybe refer to classes. You need to maybe look to your books from um, when you were studying for your test. You might need to watch a productivity class about the inspection contingency. You might need to watch one of Kimmy's classes. Um, you know, Betsy talking through an offer to purchase, maybe check in with Joan and find out um, what she would recommend you do. She may have a script for you. So getting those things lined up is even further down into the smaller domino sizes, right? Okay, so the first thing we should probably do is set a date when we need to do this because then I have a deadline, right? And then the next thing we need to do is figure out what we wanna talk about. And the next thing we need to do is get that information. So whatever we're role-playing is actually correct, right? We wanna practice the right, right information. <laughs> and then the next thing we need to do is actually show up prepared. So preparing for it is something that I need to do. So knowing what you are going to be doing and when, you can work backwards into those smaller pieces. Does this seem a little bit more approachable, like it's actually realistically going to happen now? It sounds scarier. <laughs> sounds like a lot more than I was thinking before, but yeah, no, I, I need to, yeah, I need to do that. Anyone yeah. else who wants to join me, reach out, be tied. Yeah, I saw Benji's note. I think that's a great idea. I think what you will find, Bridget, is that even though it's a lot of steps, they're small steps. And if you do the first couple, it'll start to snowball. You'll start to get momentum, especially when other people are involved and there's some accountability there. Um, it'll, it'll start to roll. So I think that's a great idea. Um, I think that's something that we could also do in our classes between productivity and launch. I would also say if you're planning on um, attending family reunion, they do a script off they did this during mega camp as well. And you may find some helpful info in those. I know some are gonna be a little bit um, beyond the basics. So it'll be like, you know, justifying your um, commission and stuff like that. But I think you may find some helpful info in there. It's at least entertaining. Um, but utilizing Joan as a resource, I think would be excellent for this. And, um, you know, if you all find that the things you want to role play about are very similar, then let's make that a priority for our classes. And let's try to focus in on that. I think that's a great idea. So the other thing that I think is important to keep in mind is whatever you are identifying as your priority is very likely, if it's business related, the priority of other people in this program. And there's a lot of you. So lean on each other too, you know, like this is a great example. You know, hey, I need to, I really need to practice. I need to. I need to walk through a buyer consultation. Great. Have you put your buyer consultation together? That's one of your top five. You should have that in place. You should at least have an outline of what you talk about with people when you're preparing them as buyers. That's going to save you time. It's going to make you a better agent for them. It's going to give them a better experience. It's better than just going out and showing houses. So how do you, how do you prepare for that? Finding somebody else that you can practice with. Getting yourself an outline together watching the classes about buyer consultation, using the resources and command and building those little steps out. What's the first domino? A lot of times it's just scheduling something. A lot of times it's just saying, okay, I need to do this. I know the only way I'm gonna do it is if I have a deadline. And so I'm gonna set a realistic date for when we're gonna do this. Okay, next week, whatever, we're going to do this role play. Now I have to break down the steps of what has to happen and plug them into my calendar. It's the only way they're going to get done. And if you have somebody else relying on you, there's some accountability in there too, which is great. So 
I think that's a really good one. Betsy said, explaining buyer agency, getting them to sign without sounding like a cheesy salesperson. That's huge. Um, yeah, buyer consult. I highly recommend practicing walking through the offer to purchase. And some of these things are in the, the videos from classes, but I think, Bridget, I think you're totally right. And I think this speaks to what I was saying with family reunion too. You can absorb that info, but when you actually have to be the one saying it and the one explaining it, uh, that's another level, right? You really have to be comfortable with what you're talking about, or you have to have a script you can fall back on to say, I'd like to get some clarity on that for you. Let me follow up. Or, you know, huh, title. You know, I really feel like the title person would be your best contact to explain that in greater detail. Since our priority is getting your offer accepted and talking about the basics of the offer, I'm not gonna get too much into those details, but I think that's a good thing to follow up on. See how I, I can just quickly, we're gonna keep moving. I still sound like a professional. I'm not a deer in headlights. We, all, none of us know everything, every little thing. None of us have an answer for every single scenario. So even just having a script for when you're not sure about something is important, right? To look like you still are the one rolling, you know, running the show. You're still the one who's the expert. Um, and that sometimes means admitting that you are not the person to go to for a specific thing, but you know who is. So I think that's a really good one. Um, anybody else have something that they're, trying to make a priority or they know they need to do, but it's just not happening. And it might be because it's not broken down to the smallest step. How, how are you guys spending your weeks? I'm so curious. I don't, I never see anybody. So I really don't know. <laughs> I dumped are you every, making phone calls? Go ahead. Yeah. I, I dumped every contact from my phone into command. And then I realized I should have careful and not put everybody in the phone because half the people in my phone I wouldn't even be talking to. Yeah. Or I can't see where we'd have enough of a relationship to talk to. Well, that might be a good, um, a good impetus to go into your contacts, Alex, and start going through, if you're following along with Janine and productivity, she's got it set up to by last name, you're making so many contacts a day mm -hmm. and going through your list. That's a great time to say like, Oh, that person can go. That person can go. As you're going through and making contacts, you can make notes about who you talk to and you can delete the ones that you don't think it makes sense to have in there. Maybe it's just because they're other agents and. Command doesn't KW. really let you <laughs> delete, right? They just only let you archive? Yeah. Yeah, but I think because you have to do that anyway, mm -hmm. using that as a step towards making those contacts, reaching out to people, not a bad idea. Qualifying people, you know, for this purpose, yep. a good idea. Yeah. Anybody else, something you're prioritizing this week or today? What do you prioritize on Tuesdays? You got a lot to absorb on Tuesdays. Or don't well, you? I've been, it's just a day to absorb. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Benji. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I'm still working. We're, you know, FRG, we're getting some leads working and website stuff. So I've been, you know, working on that and conversion. Um, I also am working through a purchase for myself, actually, and it's a really complicated deal. Um, so I've been learning a lot. So, it's, I mean, it's the building's going through litigation and there's, um, so we're doing it as a land contract and we've had to do an extension to have attorneys review on the land contract and inspection. And it's been a, a bit of a headache, but everyone, I mean, Rick and Steph, and they've all said that, you know, this is the hardest deal I'll do. So it's a good first one mm -hmm. to learn and work through. And so that's been <laughs> taking up some time. Yeah. Well, and I think it's important to recognize too, if you're, if you are in your business, right? You are in a transaction. 
there is some working on your business stuff that happens there, right? I think it's really easy to hear people say like, you got to work on your business too, and not just in your business. But let's be honest, when you're working in your business, there are things you're doing that are going to help build the foundation of your business. So for you, Benji, this is learning some really important stuff that you can use later to help a client, or you can be the go-to person for some of this unusual stuff that's coming up in your transaction, which I'm sorry to hear, but you're right. It's a good learning opportunity. You've got some great resources behind you. Um, so, you know, not feeling bad about spending time on that and saying, okay, well, how can I apply what's going on here to what I need to be doing? And then also having some other priority that keeps your pipeline flowing. Totally more real life than just saying like, I'm only going to do this or I'm only going to do that, right? Like it's, that's really what you're going to find as you do more business. It's more about that counterbalance. Okay, now I'm going to focus on this then I need to swing back and focus on that. So that's a very good learning experience. You got all kinds of stuff going on in there. Yeah, that's exciting though. <laughs> you will have a, a real good perspective on the emotions that your clients go through uh, by exactly. the time you're done with that. <laughs> oh, I, I need to get some calls. Go ahead. All right. Anybody else have anything that they want to tell us they're focusing on this week? We can hold you accountable. I can't always pick on Grady. <laughs> yeah, well, my main priority definitely is just the follow-ups and setting those meetings from uh, that and always just lead Jen, try to get in contact with somebody that randomly will pop up on my feed uh, if I'm scrolling social media or if I meet somebody out in public, just drop that card and you know, try to have a quick conversation if so. Well, staying top of mind becomes a reflex the more you do it and it can become more natural i know betsy was saying without being like cheesy and salesy that's always a concern of mine um but i can tell you i find a way to tell people this is what i do to remind people this is who, that i'm the go-to for real estate and i can do it without being cheesy so there are the more often you do it do you find grady that it feels more natural and it's not so much like pushy salesy Oh, definitely. Especially if like you can, like, you know, you ask that question first before you even mention it and it just becomes natural too, because then it's like, well, what, what about you? Like, you know, what's going on or, or, you know, what do you do? Like, you know, from there, then you can just go right into it and it's you yeah. know, more natural instead of like, like just jumping out at it. I feel like, you know, kind of like lay back, let it come to you and then like reply with it. Yeah. Well, and I think Bridget, speaking to what you're planning to do, um, you know, practicing and role playing that when I came over to KW and people started, well, I'd heard it before, but people were calling every, you know, scripts that really grossed me out. I was like, I'm not going to read a script to people. That's not me. But here's the thing. We all have scripts. We have scripts for everything. Somebody calls you about something, you launch into a script. You go to a restaurant, you launch into a script. You talk to your spouse about something, you probably have a script, right? Like everything you do and say has some kind of regularity to it. We're creatures of habit and we build those whether we want to intentionally or not. So you've got scripts no matter what. So understanding the, what do I need to get across? And then putting it into your own words is you creating a script that's genuine. Is you creating a script that's not salesy or cheesy, that's going to help you build that relationship that's going to help you focus on your priority of connecting with people, that's gonna help you build your pipeline, it's gonna help you be effective in your buyer consultation, your listing consultation, how you walk through an offer with a client, that practice, that um, understanding the priorities that you need to hit on is gonna help you make that into your own words and feel natural. So if you haven't prioritized you know, kind of going through some of those things from that perspective of, I need to know what my goal is that I need to talk about. I've got to be intentional about this. And here are the priorities of this conversation. And then practice, just get it to a point where it feels comfortable. It feels natural. It's something that you don't forget about. Um, and it's something that you can go into and it doesn't feel like you're suddenly like changing faces, you know, or putting on your business hat. Like people today don't, don't want you to change just to be servicing them as a client. They just, if they like you, they wanted to work with you. So be you 
but be the expert and you can do both. You know, you can be your more professional self, but you can still be you when you're working with people. So I think that practicing those things is, is a really good priority to have and understanding what you should be touching on when you are in those conversations is really good. And again, comes down to priority. What am I trying to get across? What do I wanna make sure they understand? So I hope that this gave you some good perspective especially after seeing the awards from January. I just think it's so easy to see people's productivity and to not understand the priority and the purpose that got them there. And that is so much more than that little tip of the iceberg that pops up out of the water. So when you are seeing that or when you're feeling like your little tip of your iceberg is just so teeny tiny, like you're new, you're just getting there. And whatever happened underneath the surface is only so big. And the more purpose you have, the more priority you have, the more productivity you have. That triangle just gets bigger as you grow and you got to start somewhere. So if you are feeling a little lost about what your priority is, or you need to get some clear idea, some clarity on your goals and where you should be headed this week, this month, this quarter to get to your goals for the year, if you, if you have them, or if you need help getting there, that's what accountability calls are for with me. You can text me to set up an accountability call. It's just a 20 or 30 minute call, but those of you that have been on it, I think can vouch for it being a very effective 20 to 30 minutes um, because the priority is to help hold you accountable and help get you to the point where you feel like you're making strides towards your goal. Um, so take advantage of that. And if you want more information about scripts or information to share with clients, I think Joan is an excellent resource. I also think that watching Kimmy's videos um, launch and productivity classes will give you some clarity on those things like buyer consultation, going through an offer to purchase. Um, but of course, we're all here to answer those questions and the helpline's a good resource for you too. So if you don't have any further questions for this week, thank you all for coming. I hope that you are walking into the rest of your day with that informed next step of what is my priority today? What should I be doing right now? That's my priority based on your purpose, based on where you wanna be at the end of this week or where you wanna be at the end of this month. Um, there's a whole lot of 2021 left. So if you feel like the last month was kind of a wash, fine. Just clean slate, start over, get focused, get clear on your priorities, know what your purpose is and move forward into the rest of this year. So have an awesome rest of your week. I look forward to hearing from some of you to set up those accountability calls. And I would love to hear how role-playing goes if anybody starts putting that together or if you need a little bit of help with that. And if there's something that is coming up for everybody that you'd like a little more info on before you practice that role-playing, please let me know. And Janine and I will keep that in mind for our upcoming classes. Remember next week is family reunion. So we don't have a launch class. That would be a great time if you're not going to do family reunion to maybe put together your role-playing practice um, or go back and watch some videos you haven't watched. And then the following week, I'm going to be bringing nuggets that I am taking from family reunion um, because one of my priorities is to make sure I'm getting information that's gonna be most useful for you in these classes. So that'll be two weeks from today. Next week, we don't have launch. So make the best use of that time um, and if you can do family reunion, do it. There are, um, there's money available if the 120 bucks is not in your budget right now. Um, talk to Charlie and you could probably get um, some kind of scholarship support um, to take advantage of that opportunity as well, which you can do from your couch in your sweatpants. And there's even interactive opportunities to maybe get some business leads out of it. So um, it very well could be worth your time. All right, well, thanks everybody. Enjoy the rest Thank of your you. Tuesday. I'll see you in two weeks. Thanks. Thanks as always. Take care, Amanda. Thank you. You're welcome.